Hi, it's Laurie and welcome back to Eco-Friendly Earth. I know I've been a bit inactive over the last couple of weeks, but with Christmas coming up and everything else has been going on, I've been really busy at work and just in general and haven't really had time to record any videos. So today I wanted to come back with a video on coral reefs, their importance and the problems facing one of the most diverse ecosystems that we have on our planet. Now, they provide shelter, food and homes for a wide variety of species and are essential in the protection of coastlines from erosion and storms. They are equally as important to the economy in certain countries that rely on it for tourism and are very highly regarded by the indigenous people of certain cultures. Comprised of a skeleton structure made from marine invertebrates, they form the reef when they extract calcium carbonate from the water and protect their softer interior. Known as polyps, they live on the skeletons of their ancestral exoskeletons, adding their own and gradually growing the reef one exoskeleton at a time. They can live within tropic and subtropic environments and even in the coldest waters of the Alaskan coast. The biggest of all these reefs exists in Australia, widely known as the Great Barrier Reef. Now, I was lucky enough to go here a few years ago and snorkel on the reef and it was absolutely incredible. I was also lucky enough to go snorkeling with a marine biologist who shared so much information about the corals, their uses and the species that actually use them, feed from them and make their home within them. It was incredible, the experience, but the most striking thing about it was that the colourful corals that we associate with the coral reef were completely gone and in their place was just white skeletons, a big mass of white skeleton structures, some still standing and some completely broken, scattered all over the seafloor. They'd been through a process called bleaching. Now bleaching occurs when there are sudden increases in sea temperatures, causing the microalgae to be expelled from the coral. Now this algae actually provides the colour and seeing as they get most of their energy from this algae, 90% in fact, that when it's gone, if they don't regain it quickly enough, then they can starve and die. The loss of corals over these bleaching events has been catastrophic and it's only going to get worse as this event starts to increase year by year. So, although the corals have been subject to these bleaching events several other times in the past, it can be seen from studying their growth rings that they've had a lot more time to recover between each event. In more recent times, I wish I knew what I was doing. So, although our coral reefs have been subject to these bleaching events several other times in the past, it can be seen from studying their growth rings that have been around for hundreds of years that they had a lot more time to recover between each bleaching event. However, in more recent years and with the increase in climate change, it means that this recovery time simply isn't possible and it doesn't give the corals enough time to grow to a mature enough stage before bleaching occurs again and turns them back into their white skeleton-like structure. It also means that with the rapid rate of climate change, what was seen in the past in 2016, these bleaching events were every six years. It could turn into an annual event causing absolute devastation to our coral and our ocean itself. It also means that with continued pressure and climate change, that it is predicted by 2050, our planet won't even provide a suitable environment to support the survival of our coral reefs. Now, this doesn't apply to every single coral reef as they all exist in different environments and different climates but it will mean that these reefs are degraded and less diverse as they don't have the ability to thrive within their natural environment. As someone who's completely in awe and very passionate about our ocean to lose our coral reefs would be absolutely devastating and it would mean that we were losing a crucial part of both our ocean and our human survival. Now the next time I'll go to the Great Barrier Reef I'd love to see its beautiful colours blooming again but this won't happen if we continue to live the way that we do and continue to put pressure on our climate and on our coral reefs specifically. So I hope this has given you some more information about our coral reefs and the problems that are actually facing this amazing ecosystem that we have under our water. So thank you for watching. I hope you've taken something away from this video and as always, do your bit to save the planet.